Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Joseph Holm, Alone Gorin, and Adam Levy from the LA Blockchain Summit. I had the pleasure of emceeing this wonderful event over the course of two days with over 40,000 people live streaming the event and certainly a lot more since then. We're here to talk about some highlights of the conference. And first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Draper, Gorin, Holm for their first round of raising and closing $25 million for blockchain companies and a lot of exciting things happening there. So Joseph, I'll turn it over to you. Can you please share with us your the best highlights you thought of at the LA blockchain? And also please mention a little bit about uh, the fund that you're able to uh, start now. Yeah, sure. So first of all, Shira, thank you so much for emceeing the event. You did a fantastic job. We got so much positive feedback. So let's give thank it up to much. Shira. Um, it was a fantastic event, you know, every year uh, we, we put this on at the LA Convention Center. This year, obviously, everything is different. We had to do it virtual, which um, at first we weren't very happy with, but then it opened up a, a, a lot of opportunities that we don't have with in-person events. We uh, got access to speakers who don't like to travel. We had a really great lineup of speakers. And obviously, if you, uh, you know, remove the cost of airfare and hotel, it's a lot easier for people to attend from around the world. Certainly. So as you mentioned before, we had 40,000 people on the live stream, uh, thousands more since then. Uh, it was definitely our biggest summit so far. Um, I think we're the biggest summit in the United States, maybe even in the world now. That's fantastic. And we're very, very excited about the outcome. Wonderful. And Alon, can you please point a little bit to uh, Draper Gorin Homes' new fund that they launched and raised and closed, and uh, all these companies are very excited to hear about it. Yeah, no, th thank you so much. Um, yeah, it, it, it's crazy. So we, we got to announce the first close of the fund. Um, it means we just, we just started. It's really exciting. But, you know, we're, it's the first time, you know, people asked us about this, actually. So it's a good, good clarification. It's the first time we have a traditional fund, but we've been investing for years and doing early stage investing in a venture studio model, which is a little bit different, but not that different for the, from, from the perspective of the startup. So we've been doing early stage investing for a long time. We have about 20 portfolio companies now. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just now we've sort of doubled down our ability to double down and triple down on companies. So if you're an early early stage blockchain company, um, or you're interested in investing in early stage blockchain companies, we'd love to hang out with you uh, and learn more about what, what your goals are and how we can help and be a part of that. Um, it's really exciting. You know, we, like, like Joseph said, we, we missed a lot of these things that we would do in real life, you know, the opening party, the dinners, the, the in-person meetings and things like that. But we're a global fund and we are a global industry and we are uh, as borderless an industry as possible with decentralization and everything. And that, that's the goal. So being able to do this conference online and have 40,000 people from around the world participate was one, it was like, you know, mind blowing, but also so exciting because the opportunities now are endless. And, uh, and you know, we, we want to uh, do as much as we can to invest in this borderless world. So it's exciting. That's amazing. And Adam, can you share with us a little bit about what it takes to pull off such a conference like this? Yeah, it, it takes months of hard work, a ton of outreach and uh, some alcohol on the side for when you lose <laughs> your mind, you know, and that's just to keep blo blockchain and booze every Tuesday nights. Exactly. That's why we have the blockchain and booze to kind of settle the nerves before we go live. Um, but look, realistically, it takes thousands of people to put something like this together, right? Like, like Joseph uh, mentioned, 40,000 people globally across two days, two stages. It's incredible. Over 270 speakers, right? Some of the top crypto minds, some of the top regulatory minds. It, it takes much more than a three, three, four person team to put something like this together, right? And to say that we did it all. Obviously, none of it would be around if it wasn't for the crypto community, right? So that, that's at the end of the day, that's that's what it's worth it. That's why we do it, right? To bring people together, to to share ideas, to to get in touch, to meet new people, right? And just to hear what's going on in crypto. So putting something like this together requires a, a, a band of, of individuals. And it was great. And it's so exciting and so inspiring to see the outcome of this event because one personally for me 
it was one of those things where you just kind of like you sit back and like, wow, so many people are actually getting so much value from this. And some of the top minds are sharing the coolest information and the most breaking news worthy information, you know, and, and people are actually leveraging your platform as a hub to, to, to better themselves, to learn more about crypto. And that's what it's all worth it at the end of the day. Right. So it's a lot of work, but it's really, really rewarding. Certainly. And kudos to all of you. I know there were a lot of moving parts, but I will tell you from the outside looking in, it seemed very seamless. It ran beautifully. And uh, Joseph, I wanted to touch upon some of these speakers that you had at this conference. It was the minds and the top minds in crypto and blockchain, people who don't typically give interviews online as well, which had huge uh, followings. So to have them at the LA Blockchain Summit was just amazing. Could you talk a little bit to the points of some of your big speakers that you had there that you were happy to have and they were able to really connect with others across this platform? Yeah, totally. So we always try to bring uh, speakers from from all all parts of the spectrum, right? So we try to bring the the, the crypto nerds and and the techies who can talk, you know, dive really deep into the into the subject matter and and uh, talk about technical aspects. We try to bring entrepreneurs. We obviously try to bring a lot of investors. That's one of our main focus as a fund. Um, <clears throat> It's very important for us to have many other funds and investors participate because the startups are trying to meet investors and get funding. And then what we had for the first time this year, and this is partially part two in being online and virtual, we had more people from the government. We had Hester Pierce, the commissioner of the SCC, speak for the first time. Um, we, uh, we had other people from the government speak. And uh, it, was a, it was a really good mix uh, I think uh, across the board of, of people who had a very interesting uh, story to share from different perspectives. Uh, certainly, it would seem so. And Alon, what would be some of your highlights that you were really happy with during the conference as well and some of your favorite panels or talks that you saw and you created over here? You know, it was uh, it was really exciting to see, you know, opening it up. For, for me, one of the, the highlights of everything we do when we do these virtual events actually is, you know, like Lunar Crush opening it up and giving the, the what's changed in the last year, what's changed over the last six months kind of thing, because this industry is growing so rapidly. Um, and uh, and seeing what's changed, but you know, it's it's those things. It's the special, you know, Pomp's interview with the special agent, um, the uh, uh, Heath from the from the CFTC, like these people that that don't normally participate, but because of this COVID world craziness, went like oh, I can just zoom in from home. I'm going to start participating in these things. And, and um, you know, having the years of reputation to have built a conference where they feel comfortable participating um, was, was really great. So it's, you know, it's not just right place, right time, but it's right place, right time, right people, right, right, right platform. And so we, it was just so exciting to see all of these things. And, and honestly, some of the things that were most exciting for me were juxtaposing that, like this crazy, you know, uh, government, high profile people to these super small crypto startups with one person and an idea or two people and an idea launching on stage, you know, like uh, Dr. Adele uh, El Naziri announcing DLN, uh, the Decentralized Lending Network. And it's not even a company yet. It's not even a, a DAO. It's just a concept. But the idea is to, to use DeFi, decentralized finance, for social good and to change the world by basically giving free microloans to people in the developing world. Like this kind of stuff can change the world. We're on, on the other side, there's also, you know, people making memes and NFTs about pineapples, like, which is ridiculous. But and if sushi, using, right? <laughs> but imagine using this ridiculous technology to change the world. That's, that's what's exciting. And things like that were happening over and over again through these, through the, you know, these conversations. And if you're paying attention, um, there's some really exciting stuff going on in the space. I think one of the things that really stuck out also is your level of community on how you bring all the different arms together and that it's open to anyone. And as you just mentioned, Alon, with somebody with an idea, but that's where it all starts. It's the idea and someone else hearing about the idea that can add to it. And I see that's almost like a blockchain, one block on top of the other that builds something into something incredible. And certainly as your example said, for the social good, that's what people want. And that's what people are clinging to, but that builds business, builds community and builds it all forward. 
And Adam, when we talk about community and we're talking about building out this conference, what were some of, let's call it the, I wouldn't call it the pitfalls, but the surprises you had along the way in terms of getting this all together or even having people understand that this virtual conference is something to be reckoned with and not just another virtual conference that people should tune into? Yeah, the, the biggest surprise for me was the amount of interest I got from speakers and, and how willing they were to participate on a virtual event and how convenient it was and the, the, the way they understood that as, as such a benefit for them and their company. You know, one of the most exciting things for me was actually having Harmony Protocol's uh, Robin Schmidt basically create this 20 minute video of, of recapping decentralized finance, the whole entire space the last year, yeah. right? And creating, like he's, he's known for creating this really unique and creative content and now bringing him and other members of the community that was like the most surprising thing to see how everyone just came together and put together such incredible content for for the crypto community per se right and it's a washed out statement but it, it it's true and it and i hear it literally every single day but there is no crypto without community right and to see all these people come together and the level of excitement too that you see from these participants from these speakers from attendees in the chat that was the most exciting to see how fired up everyone is. Certainly. And Alon, what could people do if they want to go and go through the conference and hear some of these panels? Is this available? Can people go find it? Can they search for specific speakers? Is there a way they can gain more information to be on a list to find out more and be updated? What can they do? All of the above. If you go to LABlockchainSummit.com, you could sign up uh, to the list there, to the email list but you can also go onto our YouTube channel and see every single segment from the event is up there. You can see them as the streams, but you can also see every individual panel broken down um, and you can search by the speakers and all, and all of that stuff. Um, and then uh, of course, if you are interested in the space or you're an early stage startup in the space, especially go to drapergorenholm.com and sign up to the newsletter there or submit your company there. It's never too early. We want to meet everyone and learn about every project that's out there. So, um, yeah, thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. And Joseph, one more question here. How about some companies that might be a little bit too early for your fund, but they want to be on your radar? What can they do to either catch your eye or be thought about for the next round as a, they slowly ramp up their companies? What can they do? Yeah, so we like to be the first check in, right? We like to be your first investor. So there is hardly a, a, a too early, you know, as, as soon as you have uh, a, a great project that's uh, that's coming online that you're excited about. We we want to hear from you. Uh, like Alon said, go to drapergorenholm.com, fill out the the, the form, and uh, we want to hear from you. The, the sooner the better, because we we bring a lot to the table other than just money. We help with business development and marketing, and um, obviously fundraising through our network of investors. So uh, reach out as soon as you feel like you're ready and we're excited to hear from you. Well, wonderful. Thank you all for this information share and congratulations again for a stellar conference and very exciting stuff coming out of Draper Gorin Home. And I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Thank you so much, Shira. Thank you, Shira. Excellent Thank you. job again. Thank you very much.